Hey. Oh boy, I got a good dog here and a little dog here. And got your audience out there. He doesn't care as usual, but I still do. Hi everybody, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center with Cascade the Wonder Dog. We still wonder what it is he does around here. And Sarah the World's Ugliest Chihuahua. This is a, a follow-up to my video on Shame on You McCoys, where I'm discussing their lumber. Now I've already discussed that end of it. Uh, this is the follow-up and the final on, on that, and I'm going to, um, I have a letter uh, from them, and I'm going to tell you about that letter at the end of this, but what I've done now is the next segment where I, is going to be one that I shot here in the bedroom that we're building, showing you some of the terrible lumber that they gave me. Now, I'm going to do that segment, which may be a little choppy, because I'm going to cut as much of it out as I can, so it may be a little choppy. Then I'm going to show you three different types of lumber. I'm going to show you chicken house lumber that I brought from North Florida when we moved here uh, to build this place. This is chicken house lumber I bought used and reused and then reused again. Uh, some lumber I bought from Lowe's in Odessa and the McCoy's lumber. And then I've got, uh, I'll tell you the resolution of the letter at the end of this. So let's get busy. Well, we were expecting wind today and it's come. I'm sure you can hear it over me. That's why I'm behind the camera. That and it's easier for me to show you this, um, the wall. Now this wall, it's a two by six wall. And it has to be two by six because when you go up here and look at that wall with my PEX manifold built into it, in order to put the PEX manifold in, I needed the width of a two by six. So there'll be a doorway right next to that, just to the right of the manifold. And then this wall's going up pretty much where you see it. So what happened is if I had put a two by six wall there, a two by four wall there, it would have looked funny. So I had to do this out of two by sixes. Now, to be fair, the ones that I had set aside to get my refund on that they're not giving me, um, I had to use them because I didn't have enough 8-foot 2x6s. I really had forgotten I had to plan for that. But I wanted to show you these boards. Now, obviously, you can see the one that's got the 6-inch bend to it. Somebody in their lumber yard thought that that was an acceptable board to build with. Now, this one here... It has a minor, uh, let's call that a minor twist to it. This one here has just about the same amount of twist. Now that's three of the six boards. Here we go. Now I call that a major twist. That's a major twist. A minor twist and then the board on the outside is, uh, is fairly decent in terms of twisting. But this is one I showed in the video that had all these splits through it. It's not load-bearing, so I can use the splits. Now, this is what I have to deal with. And guys, that, especially those of you that do construction, you have to ask yourself, how can you build a quality wall? How can you build a good wall when you're starting with stuff like this? But more importantly, who is going to start a business like a lumberyard? Or in this case, I don't want to even call them a lumberyard anymore. They're a glorified hardware store. Why would anyone seek to carry this lumber? I, I don't have a clue as to... The walls together, except for one board, and I left the one board off because I wanted to show you what I've had to do with every one of these boards. Now typically what I like to do is I'll take a structural screw, a three and a half inch structural screw, and I'll screw it into the top all the way around, and then I'll put my two nails in underneath that. That holds it just fine. However, some of these that are so badly twisted, like this one here, and a couple of the others, and that badly bowed one, I had to use three of these on, well, what's the big deal there? Well, a nail costs me something like um, three-tenths of a penny each nail. These things are a bit north of five cents each. So if I have to use, you know, a hundred of them, that's five extra dollars. Okay, it's not a lot of money, but if five bucks isn't a lot of money, please send it to me. The donate button's up in the upper corner of the main channel page. You know, five bucks here, five bucks here, pretty soon, uh, to, to paraphrase um, 
one of our, oh, I can't remember his name right now, one of our old U.S. Senators from the 60s, you know, he said, you know, billion dollars here, billion dollars there, pretty soon we're talking about some real money. Well, five bucks here, five bucks there, pretty soon it adds up, especially when you're on Social Security trying to build. So this is a real problem. However, one day in a parking lot I found this. Now, I laughed, and I said, I'll never use something like this. Never. Every, almost every piece of lumber I've used for rafters or um, um, floor joists, I've had to do this. I've had to put the wrench on here and turn it. Now you'll, you're liable to hear a loud crack because oftentimes what happens is it will uh, it'll pop the screw out the other end. And I'm sure you noticed as I did this that the screw on the other side uh, the other side rather twisted within the screw. Now that's as far as I dare take it. I'm going to put one of these five and a half cent screws in. And another one of these five and a half cent screws in. And what I have here is a wall this wall up but it's going to need some shimming because as you can see the floor here is completely flat this is a flat floor yet on this end I'm up about an inch and a half and on this corner here also I'm up about a half an inch I'm going to take some shimming so for those of you that might think I'm getting got a little bit overboard complaining about this lumber company, I had this with virtually all of their lumber, except for a, a short, short time after I and about, oh gosh, about 25 other uh, big buyers complained about the quality of their lumber. They went from Hampton Plus to Hampton Premium for a while. But anyway, that's, uh, that's a whole different section. I wasted a little bit too much time on it. I'm going to put this wall up and give you about 30 seconds of the wall being up. Okay, so wall's up. One board that was so the board that was so um, warped bothered me so much I put a piece of blocking in it. Uh, it's up. It's as good as a wall can possibly look with that junk lumber. But I'm never buying that stuff again. And I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about it anymore after this. It's done. It's handled. Uh, I didn't say this is the big project that I've been working on for a month now. Well, I haven't been doing the videos, and that is our master suite. I can't shut the geese up, so I have to come closer to you. Our master suite, which is just simply this whole section, it's 16 by 32, which is the bedroom, bathroom, the sitting area, a small closet there, and then the turret, which I started a couple of years ago and never finished yet. The turret will be the main master closet. Um, that's the lumber that I bought, the recent lumber, or let's call it the April lumber, and it's the April lumber where the biggest issue is. I bought um, $1,200, $1,400 worth of lumber in March that was still not good, but it was marginal, usable to a point. So I'm going to get behind the camera and show you that lumber, but first I want to discuss lumber grades for those of you that don't understand lumber grades and maybe don't understand why I'm making a big deal about getting some really crappy number two lumber. So let's talk about lumber grades from behind the camera and then um, uh, I'll show you the three levels of lumber that I've had to use and then I'm going to discuss the uh, resolution to um, from McCoy's. From behind the camera here, all of your lumber that you buy um, that's been milled is going to be stamped in some way on two sides. Uh, this one here, I don't know exactly where this came from. It's stamped High Cascade, um, and it's supposed to show on here the... Um, uh, it's supposed to have the code, codes on here and the grade of lumber. Now it doesn't, but I'm just showing you that because I'm going to show you the uh, McCoy's lumber. Um, now we get two kinds from them, Hampton Plus and a Hampton Premium, which I can't show you the Hampton Premiums right now. Um, and they have a serial number on them. They are supposed to have uh, on the back side, and, and while I'm showing you this, look at the quality of this. 
They are supposed to have on the back side another stamp. This one doesn't, but that's more than likely just a mistake. Now the first thing to discuss is in order for lumber to be number two lumber. Number one is always really expensive and it's a better quality lumber. Number one lumber has to have a clear spot, a spot with no knots in it that covers 50% or more of the board. Number two lumber has to have a clear spot that covers 33 and a third percent to 50% of clear. Now there's your 33 right there. So that's number two lumber. But, see that choppiness, that horrible, horrible choppiness and that in there? And the fact that it's coming from the end of the tree where there's bark. And here's more that I had used. Now this, again, is that same kind. Uh, I think it was an anomaly where they uh, had gotten this lumber from High Cascade. But, um, and in fact, I'm just noticing that right now, that a lot of this 2x4s that I was complaining about not here, but to my to my wife, to poor Debbie. A lot of that um, is this high cascade. And the problem I had was this right here. It's still number two lumber because you've got 33 and a third percent, or in this case, 50 percent, on that side that's clear. Now, I miss, I, I, I showing you this last, so, that tells us the, um, whoops, if you, yeah, now you can see, that tells us who made this lumber, that section right there. Number two tells you it's number two. It would be number two prime, it would say prime if it were prime, so it's number two common. What's the difference between two prime and two common? It's a whole different grade. Two prime is a much better grade than two common, so this is two common. It is kiln dried, KD kiln dried. Um, Heat treated, so it's kiln dried and heat treated. Sorry, I had a little old man brain fart for a second. And it's hemlock or fir. Doesn't have to tell me which one it is. This is their individual stamp where they're talking about, this. in other words, it isn't a universal grading. This is their individual stamp where they're talking about what this is. And it's discussing, for example, it would be discussing that it's got an awful lot of that bark edge to it. Now remember, that's another, that's not Hampton Lumber right there. Or in this case, that it had a number two side, a number two prime side, um, but this is number two common. Um, did it come from the bark end of the tree? Things like that. So, just long story short, which it's already gotten long, your lumber that you're buying is number two lumber, automatically has two grades anyway two common two prime prime being better than common so it should be number two number three number four but it's number two prime number two common number one <laughs> that's number one let's not say that though and within that then you have um is was it checked visually or was it checked by a machine uh, hampton i know does it visually so they have somebody there that's looking and saying okay i know about what a third 33% is, and this board meets the criteria of 33%. And it's supposed to be graded on the good side. Now, how that, oh, I don't know if you can see it in there, how that got included, I don't know. And it might have been damaged on the truck, to be honest. But anyway, that's, now, that's your grading. So, bottom line is that I talked to somebody by the name of Oscar Ramirez at Hampton Lumber about a couple of things, uh, one of which was that McCoy's as a chain requests number two common. And they will as a chain accept the low end. So there's something like five grades of number two and they will as a chain accept the low end number two. The cheap stuff, this stuff, or this stuff, which is Hampton. Or this stuff, which is Hampton. Actually, no, I apologize, it's not Hampton. But they're getting it from everywhere. Now that one there that I'm pointing at, that's beetle kill, and that's, that's perfectly fine. I'm talking about all these imperfections and that. 
So that's what he said, but he went on to say something else too, that McCoy's as a chain has their um, store managers uh, pick, order the supplies and, for, and, the, and chooses the suppliers, which is why I've gone to different McCoy's and got different brands of um, Portland cement. You'd think it would all be from the same company, but each manager has the right to choose the um, supplier that he buys from and therefore the quality of what he buys from. Now that brings us to something else. Most of my business experience was in Texas here, uh, a little bit in Florida, but most of it was in Texas. And when I came to Texas in the 70s and 80s, the uh, good old boy system of gratuities was very, very common. Now, what is that? Well, it's something that we're not seeing so much anymore, except maybe out here in good old boy country, where you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You buy my low-end number two lumber, and by golly, I'm going to give you some tickets to a Rangers game, a Cowboys game, a Texans game, or I'm going to send you to an exotic animal farm, and you can have a hunt. That's a good old boy system. Nothing wrong with it when it's part of the culture. But whenever you have store managers selecting and choosing their suppliers, you're opening yourself up for graft. I'm going to discuss that a little more in a moment. You're going to opening yourself up for the gratuity system. Anybody that would have the gall to deny that that is going on just simply isn't aware of what's going on within their organization. Now, I want to show you the lumber that I've used. And again, we're going to go through three grades of lumber. We're going to go through chicken house lumber that I have no idea how old it is, but it's designed on its second reuse. Lumber that I bought during the five years I refused to buy anything from McCoy's that I bought from Lowe's. And the stuff that I bought from Lowe's last year to finish the green, not Lowe's, McCoy's last year to finish the greenhouse. You'll be able to see when it's up in the rafters, because I'm only going to show you the rafters you'll be able to see the difference, and let's look right now. now I should have put these rafters uh, closer together when I built this, and I didn't because I didn't have the rafters, didn't have the money. But I want you to notice the lack of bark on them. Probably easier to show you this way. The lack of bark, notice how straight they are. There's no twisting. You're not seeing any twisting where they're butting together there at the uh, header. There's no twisting. They are stained from water. Now that came when I had leaky, a leaky roof before I replaced the entire roof. But again, no twisting. See how they butt together nicely? All right, there's a little bit of twist there. Uh, but for the most part, it isn't twisted. Now this is all chicken house lumber. It came from a defunct chicken house in uh, North Florida. And I got a deal on it and used it in Florida and then brought it here. Now we're going to look at Lowe's rafters. Now I've got quite a, um, um, now I've qu got quite an overhang here and I did that on purpose on these. Again, you're looking for a twist and you're also looking for bark. Notice, no twist, no bark. It's a bit of a sag on those headers and I'm aware of that, but uh, that's my fault for using two by sixes, which I stopped doing. No twist, no sag. And again, now right in here somewhere, we switched it back over to McCoy's Lumber, but I'm not going to worry about that. Now let's go look at the McCoy's Lumber in the greenhouse that I bought last year. This is about the time, there they go, this is about the time that um, the quality started going downhill. Okay, that twist is very obvious, isn't it? So is that one, both of these. Twist, 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 twist. I don't even think I'm going to talk, I'm just going to show you. Look at the bow on that one above the light bar, along with the twist. Alright guys, you get my point. Chicken house lumber that had been in a chicken house for, I don't know, 10, 15 years, taken down and reused by me twice, straight as an arrow. Number two, 
that I bought from Lowe's, straight as an arrow, and I just showed you the McCoy's lumber. So, bottom line here is there is a complaint. Obviously a complaint. And the complaint comes right back to what Mr. Ramirez at Hampton Lumber told me. They're actually asking for the lowest end number two that they can buy. Now, let's get into the resolution. All right, let's talk about the resolution here, why Cascade loves the heck out of me. First of all, we all know what's going on in the world right now with the uh, coronavirus and the COVID-19 disease and what's going on in the United States. And probably not a time, a good time to raise hell about a whole number of things. But I'm gonna remind everybody, the last time we had a major crisis in the United States was 1974. I lived through it. The gas, the oil embargo, where we weren't able to get oil because OPEC got together and uh, if you don't remember it or look it, look it up in history. But at any rate, before then, we pulled into a gas station, gas station, and somebody came out, pumped our gas, checked our oil, took our money, gave us our change. That was it. Well, when, oil, when, when we couldn't buy gasoline and we had to line up literally for half a mile pushing our car up to the pumps, we said, oh, man, I can have gas grade. I'll pump it myself. The oil company said, hmm, hey, oh, boy. We can cut a lot of jobs, and we can just, we can make things a lot better. So everywhere except New Jersey and Oregon, guess what you do? You pump your own gas at a convenience store instead of a gas station. What's going to happen when they, the grocery people, find out, hey, he who controls the food chain controls America. Shelves are empty, we're rationing. Hmm, this is a good time to maybe make it so that Americans are paying a lot more than 20% for their food bill. Let's raise it up. Let's get them up to 30, 35. It'll still be below the 40 to 50% that uh, Japan pays. Let's do that. And while we're at it, why don't we do away with cashiers and baggers? So by not complaining about things like poor quality lumber, you're opening yourself up to be, metaphorically speaking, pumping your own gas on everything. Well, let's get to the resolution from McCoy's. I got a letter along with a check. The check covered the uh, lumber that I, that I said was totally unusable and uh, plus a little bit for my, my pain and suffering. But the letter was uh, personally from Megan McCoy Jones. I called her Blub Blub because I couldn't remember her name. I think it's Jones. But anyway, Megan McCoy, in other words, it's a family owned or family run business. And uh, she agreed the lumber was terrible. She agreed that, that, that they'd drop the ball, blah, blah, the usual corporate things. But she took great offense at me saying that um, some of the uh, employees there, and I don't remember the exact quote, but it's something I've used quite often, that some of the employees there would be over their head if they were working the fry station at McDonald's, and maybe they should be. And she went into great detail about telling me about all the people that had been promoted from within the organization. Well, okay. If you take somebody that would be underqualified to run the fry station at McDonald's and make them a store manager, guess what? You got a guy that's taking bribes from uh, Hampton Lumber. Prove my point right there. Just because you promote from within doesn't mean you've got the best employees. It just means you promote from within. She took offense at that, however, and because of that, has banned me from all their stores. I can't go in their stores until I call her on the telephone and we have a meaningful discussion. Meaningful discussion means that I apologize for calling them out on their crappy lumber. Meaningful discussion means I agree to pull my videos down, this one and the first one down. Then I can go back in their stores and buy substandard lumber for higher prices and pay a high dollar for the uh, hardware. Well, when I started this, I already decided I wasn't going back into, Mc into McCoy's until the current store manager, a fellow by the name of uh, Robert Murphy, is no longer employed there. When he's no longer employed there, I might go back, but you're not hurting me, Megan, by banning me from your stores. You're hurting yourself because I put over, over $2,400 into that store in the month of March, and another 2000 this month. Money I'd saved up because I saw this coming and I was gonna build, finish building my house with it. So you cost yourself the other two grand I'm gonna spend, which is gonna to go to Lowe's. Over to, gotta go 410 miles. Hey, I'm retired. 
I got good vehicles, I'll drive up there and I'll save on two by sixes, I'm gonna save almost half over your price. So you're not hurting me a bit by doing that. However, if you don't like these, I'll happily take the video down. Both videos, I'll take them down. But because I pride myself on being 100% honest, I can't take those videos down when I've purchased what I know is terrible lumber. So look up my invoices. If you want to refund me for all the lumber I bought in the month of April, then I can take it down because that lumber now becomes a donation from you and you know anybody that's been to a food pantry knows you get white asparagus and uh, creamed corn along with the good stuff, but you get, you get garbage. So I'll take the garbage as a donation. If you want to refund my money, I'll take these down one they say another word about it, which I'm going to put in an email to her because I don't have a printer to uh, type a printed letter. But at any rate, that's the resolution. That's the last word on this. Uh, except for the fact that guys don't put up with it. Don't enable people to give you lesser quality of product or service. And don't reward bad behavior with your business. I am not paying rewarding McCoys for selling me all of this lumber. I'm not going to reward them with future business. Yes, I'll drive to Odessa. There's a Chinese restaurant there, and this is all over, that, that I love to go to that's right next door to Lowe's. I'll go up there, have a delicious lunch, buy everything I need, save half, go over to um, Walmart, save more money, and then come home with money in my pocket that I didn't have to give to McCoy's along with the, 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 the money for the product that I bought. Megan, you shot yourself in the foot because I believe I was one of your best retail customers in that store. And with that, folks, that's the end of this complaint. We're going to go and, and do a, um, um, a vlog now. Um, and I'm going to talk about fighting the good fight in the vlog. But for now, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas saying, <gasps> see you later. <laughs>